Now, I'm going to be moderating this session, and I'm delighted to say that we're going to be having a 15-minute chat on stage, and then we're going to be coming over to you, our audience, for some interaction. So, my four panellists today, please warmly welcome to the stage Safta Zaman, Head of IT Strategy and Governance from Nikhil. Safta is going to be joined by Varun Maholta, uh, Director, Process Improvement and Centre of Excellence, Gulf Marketing Group. Two more to go, Albert Diaz, CTO and co-founder of Musafir.com. Hello and welcome, Albert. And last but not least is Noman Rashid, CIO of Norbank. So ladies and gentlemen, please let's give all of them a warm welcome. Now, for those of you that have just returned to join us, again, we're going to be discussing customers facing IT innovations. And again, we're going to be having a 15-minute chat, and then we're going to come over to you. Do write down your questions as we go through the next 15 minutes, and we'll try and give you a voice. Exactly 17 minutes and 30, 30, 30 seconds? Oh, okay. <laughs> so as we discuss timing here on the stage, let me take over the uh, subject at hand. So gentlemen, when we're talking about IT innovations, um, do you think that customer expectations and needs are ahead or influencing the up-and-coming innovations? Or thirdly, are they innovations ahead of customer needs? Can I start with you, Albert? Yeah. Um, I think to a large extent, people know what the problems are. I don't think the innovations come to people very easily. And I know that the, you know, pe innovators are people at the end of the day. But I think we as an industry, uh, and I, I come from travel, uh, we're often, often finding ourselves in the position that we have to provide solutions that answer people's problems more than you know, people themselves saying, here's an innovation, why don't you take this? Um, look at the examples around you. Look at the way that people have solved travel uh, in terms of transportation. People you know, now can get a cab at the click of a button and it's right in front of your door there a minute from when you've hit the button. No one would have asked for that as a solution. People would probably have said, I'd like for you know, a faster way to travel around. And I think innovators are, are the ones who, at the end of the day, have to find solutions that delight customers, delight people, and that's really our job um, as innovators, as, as people in technology today, to delight people beyond what their expectations might have been. Delighting people beyond expectation. What a lovely line. I like that. Can you better that? Actually, I disagree with him, so I don't know. <laughs> that's definitely bettering it. No, it's just, uh, just another alternative point of view. I, I firmly believe that it's the need which drives all innovation. Uh, for sure, there are a lot of examples of people who have created something that the manifestation of the need was not there. But barring a few exceptional products and exceptional innovators, most of what we see, uh, the root cause of it is there was a genuine need or a demand that was becoming visible to a few smart people, a few focused people who were able to then identify what kind of solution would work. And the only way I, I believe uh, I find validity in my thoughts is because all innovation, uh, when it hits the market, it's the first level and it, it improves and it evolves. The very fact that there is evolution in all IT or non-IT innovations means that there was a little bit of a test. Uh, the original prognosis was validated that yes, the need exists and then you better it. If it were the other way around that uh, uh, we create something fantastic and then we educate the world, we would have created the fantastic product and then brought it to the market, which is not always the case. So that's the difference in opinion. And Safta, from the, from the real estate industry, what is your scope on this? Yeah, actually, um, uh, 
especially uh, in the Dubai, basically, you know, uh, the blockchain um, services, which will be the part of the Dubai 2020 V and also. So we as a part of uh, the real estate sector, I mean, I, I see a lot of innovation coming uh, in this field. And specifically, uh, if you ask me that where we stand today, I think innovation in the next uh, five years or six years, it will not be the same what we are talking about. Maybe AI, blockchain, uh, and robotics would be, uh, you know, the, the scope of the next five years, basically. And, and I see a lot of projects happening on that, uh, specifically on the customer data. Uh, and I see that, you know, the, 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 the data intelligence after smart data and big data is going to be a big uh, market sector and, and, and it's going to affect customer big time. So uh, we are not there. I think there is a, there is a huge potential of innovation in these three uh, technologies in the next decade or five years. No man, agree? I agree, but you know what, let's, let's park the IT innovation for a moment. I'm gonna share a very um, funny example, which I just came across when I came here. Um, I brought my car, gave it to the valet, just came out, valet boy was there. And, and look at the innovation here, yeah? So, the guy said, you know what, sir, you are for the event? I said, yes, I'm for the event. But sir, you know what, you have to park the, uh, your car behind the parking building. I said, listen, man, I just need to go in. Can you do something? And he looked at me and he said, you know what, there is a parking here, but you know, sir, and I, I knew what he wanted. So we had an agreement uh, and finally I just got off and he took my car. So now while I was walking from there to here and I was thinking, you know what, look at this. There is a need and there is an innovative mind there. The guy is making fantastic money from this event in, in a very smart way because he knows what he has to do. To me, that's the innovation, right? Uh, but going back to the, the original point, to me, um, need and innovation both complement each other, right? Um, wh what does it mean? You saw that example, me in a need, and that guy with a very fantastic, innovative idea. Um, look at the other way around. When, when iPads came out, were we waiting for iPads to come out? The answer is no. The innovation created the need. Now let's flip it. Um, I need a house. I need a house. I need a car. That's my need. So when need is there, then Toyota is going to come and Lexus is going to come with fantastic innovation. So there's an innovation on the back of a need. There's an innovation which creates a need. That's my simple answer to, to the question. Um, in banking world, I mean, fantastic things are happening. I'm not going to bore you all with, with that. I think uh, banks are probably one of those, uh, those uh, industries or, or sectors which are right now absolutely threatened by the, by the innovations which are happening outside in the world, in the, especially in the fintech world. Sorry, the long answer to your short question. Not at all, Noman. Now that I know that you're a soft touch, anytime you want your car parking, I will be available <laughs> on a daily basis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> no, but now, the... when it comes to adaptation, what difficulties do organizations face when it comes to adapting their company innovation strategies and business models to new innovations? And secondly, how do they overcome these? I'm going to start again. Yes, yep, please, okay. Albert. Um, I think, it's, I think it's history, legacy, however you want to spin it. I think that's the biggest obstacle to innovation in a lot of businesses today. Um, it comes from two fronts, the companies themselves and the people in it. I think if you were to pick someone right out of high school or someone right out of college and throw them in an innovative idea, they wouldn't have a preconceived notion of another way to do it, um, a, let's just say a poorer way of doing it. So innovation becomes almost the norm for them and they take, it by, by, by the, they take the bull by the horns and run from there. But in businesses where you know, people have built years and years of processes and you suddenly tell someone that, no, you don't have to fill up this paper form, why don't you go online and put it in over here, or why do it A versus B, people have resistance because they've built almost, if you will, a, a comfort with doing things in a particular way. And that legacy, that history, is what stops them from taking that innovation and running with it. And it's the same with companies too. I think you know, companies, if you look at you know, the Barnes and Noble, if you look at businesses that have collapsed over the years and not doing very well today, they've just been unwilling 
to challenge the status quo. They've been unwilling to challenge and change the way that they do things in a particular way and said, it's just difficult. It's just that I have people in the company who are not willing to do it and they don't see the writing on the wall quite often. So I think it's history, it's legacy for me in that, in that respect. I think it's also very interesting what you've hit on in that if you do not adapt, if you do not move on, you are going to have to say goodbye. Yep, very much. Yeah. yeah Your actually, own thoughts. I can only add to that. I think you're absolutely right. A lot of times we, the, the comfort zone that comes from, from knowing how things should be done just because they should be done prevents a lot of fresh thinking. Uh, so to not repeat the point, I, I might like to, I'd like to add on another point. Uh, about two sessions before this, there was a very engaging discussion about, I think it was around uh, customer loyalty. I, I walked in after it started. So, uh, the, the people in the panel were talking about uh, how in the space of customer loyalty there has been an uh, rapid evolution and the challenges and so so I'm, I'm trying to pick from that two very very interesting themes one was that a gentleman I think was sitting here was talking about you you want to do things but you don't put your commitment behind it so there is accountability without responsibility and resources so what that's one practical challenge that comes across the other one was there has been a fairly rapid uh, evolution uh, in terms of how much you can do. And, uh, you know, if you want, you can target the tall one and the short one and the fat one and the Indian and, and you know, the Asian and the guy who comes every day and the guy who comes once a month. You know, you can segment them. There's been a lot of very rapid evolution in that space about how, how specific your targeting can be. And it has not kept pace with some of the things because we don't live in isolation and this is only one element of doing business. Uh, it's not kept in pace with uh, you know, the other elements more specifically around, I still don't know what to target them about. I can target them. Uh, I now have the ability to identify 25 market segments instead of two. But uh, I don't have the same amount of processing speed to effectively use that segmentation. I don't have enough width in my offering to, the product is still the same. So, Musafir is still offering a solution for travel. It has its variation, but it's not 25 different products. So, a lot more needs to happen in, in other spaces for us to effectively leverage this rapid development of, I can now do so much more, which is lagging behind. Safta, your thoughts on adaptation? Yeah, see, I see it uh, from two uh, perspectives. One is the technology and another other is the, uh, you know, uh, the culture and like rightly said by my colleague. Uh, what is happening that uh, uh, the CIOs basically, they are, they are more involved in the strategies and you know, now uh, the strategy without the IT systems is not a strategy anymore. It has to be a digital strategy, right? So that, that mind shift basically from, from conventional strategies to a digital strategies, is, it means that there is a cultural shift in the organization where technical guys have a lot of know-how because an e-commerce e uh, um, CEO cannot drive the strategy unless the CIO uh, supports him and says that, okay, this is possible or not. So maturity of the organizations to adopt that change from the technical side as well as from the culture side is one challenge. The second thing is this, the way the, the, the setups of the organizations and the technologies have been till now, they, have not, they are not ready for that change. I will give you an example because um, data is the key of the innovation and personalization and custom interaction. Right now from the data perspective and data analytics and AI perspective, th th these things are at a very uh, beginner level, you know, and they are, they are coming up. In the next one and a half year, we will see revolution and, and so many things happening. So, so that, that organization, the process digitalization and the back end to support the digitalization drive and the, uh, and the recognition of the CIOs on the table uh, to drive those strategies, I think, uh, these are the uh, things which are evolving and would be settled down. And Noman, how do you think we uh, face these adaptations? And of course, real emphasis on how do we overcome the resistance that the gentlemen have spoken about? Yes, I think um, probably I'm going to give again one more example 
fantastic one this was yesterday did they get money for this one as well no so it's 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 from the guys who give me money by the way <laughs> so so this is uh, i was in a forum or in a, in a meeting yesterday um, with my ceo and the senior guys uh, this is about noor you know the organization i'm i'm, I'm representing here and we are discussing strategy there and i'm only i'm the only tech guy um, in, in that room right now the amazing thing which is happening there is uh, my boss the, the ceo he, he says you know what noman uh, what about cloud we should have cloud strategy in 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 our uh, core strategy overarching and i said fantastic boss then there was another gentleman very senior uh, and he said you know we should have something which is to do with machine learning and then when i said i said you know what what's going on here Th these are the same guys probably 7 8 9 years back uh, to whom we as technology people used to go and educate them why we need to spend in that area and now there is a complete shift now i see on my ceo's table more tech magazines as opposed to business magazines so that's a big change there but where the challenge is coming now is that when you go down to the second and third and fourth layer there is a resistance uh, the adaptation is a issue uh, the skills you know when you say we need to be innovative uh, that's a myth you know wh what do you mean by innovative we are innovative um, but when you go back to their desk and you see what they do it's not innovation i don't know how many of you have uh, uh, have have studied this uh, this interesting concept of from uh, from a professor or a scholar uh, conman his name but system 1 system 2 theory this is this is i'm sure you will do your google and, and check that but that's that's linked with innovation how your brain thinks when you say 5 plus 5 uh, that's that's 10 uh, when you say 19 plus 38 you start thinking now so that's system one, system two. So the challenges are there. Adaptation uh, culture is another issue. I think my colleague talked about big time. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be coming over to you, our audience, in about three minutes from now. So if you've got your questions, do start writing them down. We'd love to hear from you. Now, gentlemen, reverting back to you, in 30 seconds, can you tell me what you see the future IT innovations and how they're going to change the business uh, paradigm? In 30 seconds, give me your feedback, Albert. I think that the change we're going to see is that companies will be forced to make a decision, to pick a side, if you will, to choose whether they want to be service providers or if they want to be intelligence providers. And I think that's the question we're all being posed today. Do you want to provide a service or provide intelligence? How you choose your technology will be determined by that first decision. And if you choose intelligence, that's the change in the paradigm we're seeing today. Service providers are providing more and more services more efficiently, but it's the intelligence providers who are bundling those services together and helping us make sense of it. Think of FinTech as an example there too. They're helping us make sense of a service that's been, been done really well for decades and now has intelligence layered on top of it. Varun, 30 seconds, what's your line? Uh, I, I would think that the next uh, few decades would be more about translation of technology. I think we have enough in a James Bond movie that makes us go wild about what technology can do. I feel that the next many years would be more about making it more mass and making it more replicable uh, across larger segments. That's my feeling. Thank you. Safta? Yeah, um, what I feel that uh, in the next uh, decade, uh, humans and machines would interact more and none of the process which you are doing would be completely managed by the humans. It will be a coexistence basically, like chatbots, or the robots or that sort of interaction. So machines are going to be pretty much part of our uh, communication and our uh, uh, innovation space. Thank you. I think, no, to be honest, you, you're absolutely right. I think and, and when you say, how is innovation going to change the business paradigm? I think it's already, it has already done it. Uh, where is Kodak now? Where is Nokia? Where is Blackberry? Where is Epson? Where is Netscape browser? So uh, innovation has already damaged the business paradigm. You talk about the customer interactions, the customer interaction with innovation, that's in my pocket right now, right? My social media, my social life is in my pocket in my smartphone. Um, so innovation is already there. Um, 
and it's going to continue to evolve and continue to evolve. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much summarizes our topic for customer uh, facing IT innovations. Now, sadly, we won't have any time for questions from the audience, but please do take a good look at our panelists and do approach them in the coffee break this afternoon. And of course, that just gives me time to wrap up thanking all four of you. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Albert, Varun, Safta, and Norman. Thank you all very much indeed. And of course, next, I'm going to be looking forward to introducing our next speaker. Now, there's going to be a slight logistics change on the stage, and uh, we're going to be getting down to our next session.